Okay then, hello, hello, welcome to the Train Buddy Shop. We're delighted to see you. And we're about to um, do a, oh, look. Oh, I guess we're going to get right on this. You betcha. Uh-huh. We got a, an engine. A little, um, it's in pieces. It says uh, we need to connect the engine, connect the motor, and put sound in it. Well, we got our work cut out for us today. So let's get this unboxed and see what we need to do here. Be back in a second when I get set up. Okay, so so this is a brass engine, and um, typically uh, brass engines have uh, are, are somewhat problematic. Uh, because uh, usually the pickup is from the right hand rail um, on the engine and from the left hand rail on the tender and then they're connected together with the draw bar. So in, in typical fashion the draw bar is part of the issue uh, has to be insulated. Now that's normal. I don't know what the situation is here and we're going to find out in just a second. But uh, the, that means that the engine itself, the motor and everything else, or the frame itself is connected directly to the wheels. Um, that means that, that this has to be insulated or isolated from the, from the decoder uh, totally. So we're going to run a little, little test here. Um, don't know if you can hear the, hear the beep or not. We're going to set up a continuity tech, checker here. Well, I thought we were going to do continuity check. Maybe not. Okay, there we go. Got a little beep there. And we're going to test the, the right wheel, right, and the frame. And, yeah, you can hear that, right? Left wheel and frame and nothing. Okay, let's do the, do on the tender. Um... And this being the frame, right, and the left wheel, which would be over here, correct? Yep. Left wheel and frame. Yeah, just just barely. So this may be part of the issue we're going to have to resolve with this engine is is uh, connectivity. These wheels look kind of funny. They're, they look like they might be aluminum or something. I don't know. Don't look, don't look like they have much brass content because of the, the color of them. All righty then. Uh, let's get started on this. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is make sure that the, the motor runs. Um, somebody put, put some tape on there to try, to try to connect that and keep it together. Well, that's a good idea. Uh, doesn't quite quite stay there and the other thing that you notice here is that the way the motor is is sitting this particular motor is sitting if it was sitting in here like this then there's there's quite a bit of of um, um, uh, um, pressure put on the universal joint in a connection like this let's get a little bit closer here quite a bit of quite a bit of pressure put on the on the universal joint at an angle so what you want is you want something that that either is where the you can stabilize this so that this is a straightaway pattern or you can you can put this up at an angle like this so many of them you see at a kind of a 45 degree angle not quite sure what we're going to do with this one yet um, need to look at probably replacing replacing uh, this joint here uh, somebody's put some some tubing in there but uh, it's obviously not making good contact uh, we have some other tubing or some other universals that uh, 
that might do a better job and so that's the uh, first thing we want to do is test the motor. Let's test this motor and see uh, see what we got for, for connectivity. Oop, went the wrong way, sorry. Um, so let's go ahead and put some put some power to it uh, from our bench. Our bench tester. And so already is running. And what we're what we're looking for is I'm going to hold the flywheel now. We're going to look for current. So at three volts, four volts, five volts, six volts, which is which is half. It's at 0.13, so 130 milliamps. So that's uh, that's very nice. I won't go all the way up to the 12 volts, but uh, and almost nothing almost no amps drawn at all under uh, free wheel which is I don't think I've ever seen that before uh, 7.2 7.9 8 9 10 11 12 12 volts and no amps I'm gonna actually grab it 0.26 so this is an exceptionally fine motor um, not quite sure what the, the the drag obviously is nothing uh, we'll see whether or not it's able to pull this engine evidently it does but oftentimes uh, there's no torque there if there's no amperage being drawn hmm we shall see looks like somebody's also wrapped wrapped the entire engine or entire motor in tape and while that's uh, that's okay to try to insulate it from the frame. Uh, we're going to do a test here on the on the motor itself, and rather than use uh, use a tape that, as I'm pulling this off, it's gooey, and gummy. Okay, we're going to use Captain tape to to wrap it if we have to. Uh, Captain tape is uh, is a, a, a better um, alternative because the the uh, for lots of reasons one it's a lot thinner than normal tape um, another is that uh, it is designed that the the uh, adhesive itself is designed to stick to metal it's designed to be removed with no residue and it works under high temperatures which uh, this may very well get to so uh, let me clean this off. It's got some gummy stuff on there, so I'm going to go ahead and clean it off with some some Goo Gone uh, before I test it. So hold on. All right. So now we're going to do a continuity test. You can hear the hear the tester. I hope, but uh, we're doing a continuity test between each one of the terminals, right, and the outside shell. Now, typically these are not connected, all right. So again, not connected to that one, right? Not connected to that one. But you can imagine if these were connected, the brushes were brush or brushless was connected. In this case, a brushed motor. Uh, the brushes were connected to the outside frame, uh, and you had a situation where you're doing pickup uh, on the on the motor. Uh, I'm sorry, pickup from the track is connected to the entire frame. Uh, so then you have this confusion again with DCC, the motor must be isolated, totally isolated from the from the the pickups, left and right pickups. And so this translates again into the to the frame, right? Directly to the frame, the right hand uh, rail. So you don't want this to be connected here, 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 and here. Um, then that that'll create a problem. Matter of fact, it will it blow up your decoder. So we want to make perfectly sure that all of that's insulated before we get started. So now I'm going to need to come up with a a mechanism to hook these two together. Um, hmm, a universal. The typical universal that I would use is a is a special rubber piece that um, 
that you can cut the length. Um, and I usually get it from Bowser, and I've sold out all that I had. So um, until I get something like that, um, we are we are dead in the water here. I could start working on the decoder, and so maybe we'll do that while we're waiting on parts for this. Okay then, so I've uh, I've managed to find some some neoprene tubing um, that uh, that I had to put in two diameters, the small diameter for the motor and then the larger diameter for the gearbox. And I'm going to go ahead and, and fire this up. I've got it on a on a stand with uh, so that uh, the wheels can rotate, but it doesn't move. And uh, I've hooked the motor directly to the to the power supply, and I'm going to kind of kind of hold the the gearbox with my hand as I increase the voltage here. Okay. And so there's a. There's a stiffening or a tightening or something happening here. The motor's not turning. So it might be something with the gearbox. And I'm doing this by hand here because it looks like there's current current flowing in the motor, but it's not turning like it's supposed to. It's going a little bit. Hmm. Now this is going in reverse, so I'm gonna go ahead and change the change the contacts here. Well, there's a there's a, a very very heavy stiffening here of the of the gearbox and the and the gears. So I'm going to see if there's some might be some uh, some issues with the gears. Uh, and let me let me investigate that a little bit. Aha! So one of the things that's as I'm looking at this. Uh, at this motor, one of the things that oftentimes is an issue is the eccentric, and so this is the eccentric, and the eccentric needs to be five degrees off of center, like this, right? So that one looks good, this one looks good, and it looks like these have been soldered in, right? So now I look at other other issues. Uh, this uh, drive rod here. This rod here, as it goes in, is the is the knee or elbow here? Is that correct? Does it look like the slider's looking good? It is on this side, and as they turn it over, whoops! Right here, this is at an angle. What? So the question is, why is it at an angle? And it looks like it's wedged. Looks like it's wedged right there. So there is part of the issue. And one of the things that I notice here is this is broken off. So we're going to have to to fix this, fix this piece right here, and I'm going to have to loosen it up. And then this, which is the the piston, right, needs to be that piston rod. I don't know if you can see it there. Let's turn it around where I can point to it. This piston rod right here, right, needs to be connected to the I call it the alligator. I'm not quite sure what this is correct is. The slider. Okay? So the, this is the piston rod. It needs to be connected to the slider. It goes back and forth. And that's creating this issue and this binding in this locomotive. So let me uh, let me work on that. So in, in looking at it, uh, freeing that, that piece up and looking at it, 
Um, this, the, the rod itself would be connected to the slider uh, right, right there. And as you can see on the other side, it looks like it might even be soldered in on the other side. You can't see it, can you? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out and remove the, you know, bigger screwdriver, but remove the the uh, piston box just like that okay. remove this piston box and then see if we can't can't solder that piece so here it comes out comes out of my hand right solder that piston piece um, onto the slider and then put it all back together again hmm all right then. All righty then. So now I've set this up. I've I've got it uh, removed. I took the took the screw out of the um, out of the uh, out of the sliding mechanism. Come on, focus. There you go. Took that screw out. Not not very much to it, but at least it allowed me to get the the head out. And as you see, I've, now I've got the two pieces stuck together with the mechanism. So come back out a little bit so you can see the mechanism. Um, hold my helping hands, helping hands here. And that will hold that together now while I go ahead and solder it. Now the issue that I've got is that this whole mechanism, this is one, one piece here. And then the sliding arm is another piece. And it's being held together right here with a with a hole and a pin. So what I'm going to try to do is just the least amount because it has to to wobble back and forth right in here. Least amount of solder that I can get. So I'm going to try to get this part hot and then just barely touch it with the solder. Now I could have super glued it or put some other other glue in there that would hold it. But I'm afraid it wouldn't hold permanently. So the idea of putting solder in there makes it so that it'll it'll hold uh, for the lifetime of this engine. Um, we're um, uh, it, it looks like it was riveted. It looks like the end of of this piece uh, was in fact a rivet that went through that hole and was pinged over. And of course, I could put put that I guess in some kind of a vise and try and ping it over but uh, the method I've chosen here is solder we'll see whether or not that works or not so as the soldering iron gets hot and then I'll, I'll come back so we have a very fine solder that we're using and uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to I've already cleaned the tip and got some some uh, um, rosin on it and as you can see the the rosin uh, makes it smoke uh, which is your flux so I'm going to apply, apply heat right on the joint and when it's hot enough um, the solder will flow and again trying to trying to put heat mainly on the on the cylinder um, rod and not so much on the holder I keep touching the soldering iron to see whether or not it's still still working okay it started to flow now right on that joint And hopefully it's wicked through. 
to make sure that this is is straight. Ooh, even the pins are, even the clips are, are hot. It may not be perfectly straight, and I may break the joint as I as it cools off, but uh, we'll see here in a second. Okay then, we have a we have a pretty stable joint there. That's good. I'm going to try to straighten it up just a little bit. I don't know if you can. You know, it's it's pretty obvious here. If I if I do this on the pad, you can see that it's an angle. I'm going to straighten that out just to, just a touch, just so that it makes a nice 90 degree angle right there. Now let's see if I can bend it. I may have to use a pair of pliers to to get it to bend. Oh. And as predicted, as soon as I touched it, the uh, it quit. So I'm going to, have to put it back in the. Oh, that's interesting. I've got enough solder on the end where this dangles, uh, and it's not coming out. Well, anyways, I want it to be a good joint, so I'm going to go back and set it up again in the in the vise. And uh, soldering iron is still hot. Put the, the holder first and then clamp the rod next. What do you think? Did that look did that look better? That's make sure that it's perfectly straight this time. Okay, now let's heat it up. So, in any case, uh, we want the, this to be fairly hot, as hot as we can get it at this point. It, it really has to do with the amount of metal that you're trying to solder. So again, trying to get it up to temperature where the where the metal itself is is uh, at soldering temperature. This has to be um, centered not uh, not only 90 degrees from the uh, as we're looking at it here, but also in uh, the other dimension, front to back. Well, it's definitely, um, the solder is going in to where I expect it to go in. Don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's definitely doing the job. Okay, I'm going to let that cool off now, and then uh, we'll do another, another test. Okay, then. This is perfectly stable. Right. stable enough for for the work that we're doing uh, a little bit of a bead on the back here and uh, we won't know until we hook it up to see whether or not we can file that down or whatever but uh, otherwise it looks good we we're talking about this way right make sure that that is on a straight line this way and it looks pretty good I'm not going to fuss with it at this point uh, again for issue so, put it all together. Alrighty then, so let's get back to uh, finishing this up, uh, at least uh, for, the, for the piece that we fixed. Let's go ahead and, and put, the, um, put the cylinders on, right, and, uh, and get that squared away. It goes this way. Alright, and... Uh, not a complicated thing. We need to put that one screw in the in the crosshead um, and uh, put everything back in place, and uh, we'll be back. So I don't know if this means anything. Um, uh, maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. 
but um, this is a piston uh, rod <clears throat> so typically it would go in and out in and out um, and this would be really 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 clean for a couple of reasons one is that because of the movement the abrasion of the of the rod inside of the cylinder would keep it clean now it looks like it's got maybe some paint on it um, could have been part of the issue here but I'm going to go ahead and clean this thing up and uh, make sure that it's lubricated we don't want the same issue to to happen and if you notice this one had was cleaned from here out but not all the way back and the other one was clean well clean for the most part almost up until the the change in uh, in diameter here so um, so again I'm going to clean this one up real good uh, before we put it back and, and make sure that it's looped nice well while it seems simple enough this is a real pain in the butt to get that in there and uh, make sure that all of the the little cross pieces are in the right angle so this has an elbow we look to it right make sure it's an elbow and not a knee um, could, could be this way instead of this way right? same way on the other side make sure that both of those were right make sure that the that the valve rod at the top and the cylinder rod at the bottom right both are both are inserted make sure that the the uh, slider is on the rails on both sides now all I have to do he says all I have to do is attach right here the the slider to the to the drive rod um, hopefully I can get that accomplished and 